This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. The Brent crude market structure and some physical markets in Europe and Africa are reflecting tighter supply resulting partly from concern about shipping delays due to vessels avoiding the Red Sea, according to traders, LSEG data and analysts. The disruptions have combined with other factors such as outages and rising Chinese demand to increase competition for crude supply that does not have to transit the Suez Canal, and analysts say this is most evident in European markets. In a sign of tighter supply, the structure of the benchmark Brent crude futures market hit its most bullish in two months on Friday, as tankers diverted from the Red Sea following airstrikes by the United States and Britain on targets in Yemen. The United States bought 3.2 million barrels of oil for the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, as it continues to slowly replenish the stash after selling a record amount following Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022, a Department of Energy document showed on Friday. The US bought 1.4 million barrels from ExxonMobil, 600,000 barrels from Macquarie Commodities Trading, and 600,000 barrels from BP Products North America, the document showed. Philips 66 Co. and Sunoco Partners Marketing and Terminals LP each bought 300,000 barrels. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. North Dakota's oil output could take about a month to recover after a severe freeze cut production by more than half this week, state officials said on Friday. Oil output in the third largest oil producing state was estimated to be down 350,000 barrels per day, BPD to 400,000 barrels of oil per day, or about 30%, on Friday, according to the North Dakota Pipeline Authority. That compared with production outage of 500,000 barrels of oil per day to 550,000 barrels of oil per day on Thursday. January is going to be a very bad month for production, said Lynn Helms, director of the state's Department of Mineral Resources. Oil prices settled slightly lower on Friday but recorded a weekly gain as Middle East tensions and disruptions to oil output offset concerns about the Chinese and global economies. Brent futures settled 54 cents lower at $78.56 a barrel. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude fell 67 cents to settle at $73.41. For the week, Brent gained about 0.5 percent while the U.S. benchmark rose over 1 percent. In China, slower-than-expected economic growth in the fourth quarter raised doubts about forecasts that demand there will drive global oil growth in 2024. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. Copper prices rose on Friday as technical factors and lower available stocks supported recovery from the previous session's six-week low, though gains are likely to be kept in check by cautious trading ahead of the Chinese New Year. Three-month copper on the London Metal Exchange, LME, rose 0.6% to $8,361 a metric ton by 17.05 GMT, heading for a weekly gain of 0.2% to end three weeks of declines. It hit $8,245 on Thursday for its lowest since December 6. On warrant copper stocks in LME registered warehouses fell to a four-month low after fresh cancellations, daily LME data showed. Iron ore futures prices rose for a second consecutive session on Friday, underpinned by renewed hopes for further stimulus from top consumer China and a flurry of pre-holiday replenishment by steelmakers. The most traded May iron ore contract on China's Dalian Commodity Exchange, DCE, ended daytime trade 2.63% higher at 957 yuan, $133.04, a metric ton, the highest since January 12. It posted a weekly rise of 1.3%. The benchmark February iron ore contract on the Singapore exchange ticked up 0.55% by 0722 GMT to hit its highest level since January 16 at $130.15 a ton, recording a weekly gain of 2.1%. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. Attacks on shipping in the Red Sea region have in past days led to a sharp rise in the number of grain cargoes being diverted around the Cape of Good Hope, rather than using the Suez Canal, grain traders and analysts said on Friday. Earlier this week, 
shipping sources had said they expected some grain cargo diversions but that most would continue to risk passing through the Suez Canal, which is the shortest shipping route between Europe and Asia. But continued attacks on shipping this week by Iran-backed Houthi militia despite US-led airstrikes on Houthi positions in Yemen mean more dry bulk carriers transporting grain are avoiding the Red Sea, analysts and grain traders said. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.